you guys have uh, any interest in pursuing Baker Mayfield on the waiver wire? Um, I mean, we look into everything, but um, that was, I mean, that surprised me right now. I and mean, we got to discuss more this afternoon and stuff. But, um, you know, I've always been a fan of his, but feel real good about our players. And we'll look into everything, but I feel pretty good with where we're at right now. All right, that was 49ers coach Kyle Shanahan talking about Baker Mayfield, the much maligned Baker Mayfield. He has to be better than Brock Purdy. But at the same time, you know what I was thinking? I don't think so. J- Jacoby? I mean, that was, that, was, that was a nice way of saying, like, yeah, I'm not interested. Yeah. Jacoby Brissett playing so well. That was the so voice well. of Kyle Shanahan, by the way, for those listening at home. Yeah. The, the, the level at which Jacoby Brissett played this season makes me think that maybe Baker Mayfield was just bad all along. And he was just with that Cleveland offensive line, with the running game, with the play action that he used. I don't know. Baker Mayfield. Someone's going to pick him up. Someone, someone is. I mean, this guy's a former number one overall pick in the NFL draft. By the way, and the other thing on Baker Mayfield, we don't need to derail, but by, by the way, it's not like Baker Mayfield has not had success in the NFL. Like, he's I mean, had that, two that, that really play- good years. He's, right. That's, that's the thing, right? That, the playoff game, um, like, he went into Pittsburgh and beat the Steelers, and that wasn't like sure. a like, – they beat the Steelers. Yeah, like, that like was – 45. Right. Yeah, exactly. And Baker was great in that game. Like, I just – Tough year I think for Baker. Tough, tough. Year for, tough year for Baker. I mean, listen, it's a mess in Carolina. Like, you know, like, I mean, it's not like Sam Darnold or P.J. Walker, like, lighting it up and everything like that. Like, they fired the head coach. And it, it. Yeah. anyway, so. Looking forward to Baker Mayfield on my New York Jets next year. If that feels destined to happen. Or yeah. maybe the Indianapolis Colts. After Mike White gets team. a max deal somewhere. Yeah, exactly. The great Mike White. We're going to talk about him soon. But first, let's talk about another San Francisco 49er, a guy who is on the team, Brock Purdy. You're adding Brock Purdy. Uh, I'm not. I mean, listen, it, I'll just say I'll say that, like, if you're in a two-quarterback league, if you're in a super flex league, deep league, then sure, I'm in a couple of those. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that Garoppolo had multiple touchdown passes in five of the last seven. It's worth noting that the Niners lead the NFL in yards after catch per reception, yeah. which makes sense. Short passes to Debo Samuel, to Brandon Ayuk, to Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle, who's great after the catch as well. Yep. And if I'm Kyle Shanahan, that's the offense I'm calling, right? You know, just like, hey, Brock Purdy, we're not going to ask you to do much. Just really simple stuff. Move you outside of the pocket. Just some quick slants. Just, you know, quick throws, that kind of stuff. And just, like, really easy pitch and catch stuff. And let my skill guys do what they do. And, you know, there may not be a better guy in the NFL to scheme up, you know, uh, getting guys in space and creating mismatches than Kyle Shanahan. So, um He's not going to add anything with the legs, and it's still going to be a conservative offense that'll be in tight games because of their defense. And so I I guess I'm saying I think there is, in a deep two-quarterback league, uh, I think he could be, like, not awful. Yeah. Like, I think he could be usable. Like, you you know know what I mean? There are other quarterbacks out there that I like, starting with Jared Goff, who's out there still in half of Yahoo leagues. That would be my number one quarterback if he's still available, right? I mean, they play the Minnesota Vikings at home this week. We've talked about the fact that when he's playing at home, Jared Goff averages over 20 fantasy points per game. The Vikings have allowed over 300 passing yards in four straight games. And as you have noted, Jay, the line of this game is super close. It's Well, the Lions are now two and a half point favorites. Home field advantage these days in the NFL is worth one and a half to two points. So BetMGM and the market are saying that the Detroit Lions are just a better football team than the 10 and two Minnesota Vikings. And I'm not sure I disagree. Well, it's certainly close. The fact of the matter is, is that if you looked at the records, you say like, all right, well, this is like a, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is going to be a blowout. I think Detroit's got a better offense than Minnesota, and they've both got pretty bad defenses. So, what's really the Comes difference? down to the last possession. Either way, we expect a lot of fantasy points to be scored in this one, especially from the Detroit Lions, who now have a fully healthy DeAndre Swift to go along with the, the Sun God and Jamal Williams and all the complimentary pieces they have there in Detroit. Let's talk now about Mike White of your beloved New York Jets. My man, Mike White, who just continues to put up 300-yard games for fun. And I think the best thing about Mike White is that he realizes that it's good if you throw to your best player. He targeted Garrett Wilson 15 times. And the crazy thing about Garrett Wilson's game, which is very tied to Mike White, is that Garrett Wilson went 8 for 162 and left a ton of yards on the table. Mike White missed him for an 80-yard touchdown, which would have changed the complexion of the game. But you've seen what he's done his first two starts of the season. 315 yards, 369 yards, three touchdowns in the first game. Doesn't get on the board uh, in the end zone in the second game against Minnesota. Throws a couple of picks. Don't really criticize him for the loss. He just looks good out there. Yeah, I mean, listen, he had had 19 fantasy points last week, uh, 24 the week before. 
And he plays the Bills this week, where, again, as we mentioned, Bills are nine-and-a-half-point favorites. So, in theory, Jets going to be having to throw to catch up. And I think this would shock people. But over the last month, the Buffalo Bills are a bottom-five pass defense. Yeah, and they're banged up. They're, they're banged up, and teams are having to throw a lot on them as, as well. And so, um, I, I guess my point is, is like, I, I think you'd say, oh, on the road to Buffalo, oh, man. Like, the matchup doesn't scare me as much. Like, it might be some junk time, but uh, the Jets, people forget, the Jets beat the Bills the first time they played. They did, and they, and they played them very well, and they beat them with Zach Wilson as well. And it's not like Zach Wilson be interesting to game. see. Yeah. Interesting to see, like, if Mike but, White can't beat Zach, can't beat the Bills, but <laughs> well, Zach Wilson by, did. Yeah, means the Jets win by 20 now. They've got Mike White uh, there you go. at quarterback. So, yeah, I think that Mike White, just the fact that he has that – rapport with Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson, much like Justin Jefferson, lifts Kirk Cousins. Like, Garrett Wilson, when he doesn't have Zach Wilson as his quarterback, it's basically Tyree Kill meets Justin Jefferson. Puts I mean, up insane I, stat lines. It's been, uh, it's been amazing to see and has moved Garrett Wilson and just must start, doesn't matter yeah, who he's playing. Borderline wide territory. receiver one, yeah, if not just the wide receiver one. And uh, I wonder, my only other question about this is, like, when the Jets play the Bills... What Disney movie do you think they all wear shirts from as they walk in? Because, you know, they did Mighty Ducks last week. Is yeah. it 101 they lost Dalmatians? The game, though. Do you reckon they, they go away from it because they lost the game? Well, they went for an underdog. They went underdog sports movie. Okay. So do you think it was Disney or do you think underdog sports movie? Because they could be like the Bad News Bears. Bad News Bears. They could be... Um, remember the Titans. Remember, remember the, the Titans. Line. Remember the Jets. They remember the Jets. <laughs> they, could, they could wear... Um, they, could, uh, they could all wear, you know, Rocky Balboa shirts. Sure. They could, uh, you know... Good vibe around uh, right? the Jets. Right? You know what they should do? Here's what they should do. They should all wear the NASCAR Wonder Bread <laughs> outfits from Days of Thunder. Yeah. Not okay. Days of Thunder. What's the Will Ferrell movie? The, uh, Talladega, Talladega Nights. Nights. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Days of Thunder is the is the is the one they're making fun of. Right. Talladega Nights is the Tom Cruise Days one. Days of Thunder with is Nicole Kidman in that too. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course yeah. she is. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's Australian. Nicole Kidman. Shout out, Nicole. I know you watched the show. All right. Let's go to the Ravens situation. But first, let's hear from John Harbour on Lamar Jackson. John, uh, any update on Lamar? Yeah, we, um, uh, he's been through the MRIs, and uh, I would say it's kind of week to week. You know, it's going to be a weekly thing. So uh, as the week goes on, we'll see for this week. It's probably less likely for this week, but it's not impossible. Um, and then after that, it'll become more and more likely. Lamar Jackson, chronically hurt of late. He had a similar thing with his ankle at the end of last year where it was week to week and then he just never came back. This seems less severe this time. But Tyler Huntley filled in ably last time he was in, had an incredible rapport with Mark Andrews. Is Tyler Huntley, is he an ad? I think he is. I mean, like, if you look at his game log, like, he had some, like, 35-point games, then he had, like, some 14-point games. So a little bit up and down and inconsistent. But in the six games over the last two years and where he's played the majority of the snaps, he is averaging 15.9 fantasy points per game as you see it there on your screen. And I think the most important stat that's there on your screen, he's averaging 54 rushing yards a game, and he's got three rushing touchdowns in his career when he plays over 50% of the offensive snaps. So that's, that's six games over the last two years. So, you know, the three touchdowns in six games, three rushing touchdowns in six games, the 54 rushing yards per game over the six just makes you feel like at least there's a floor there with Tyler Huntley. I'm not worried about Mark Andrews. He had some good games. I know bad game for Mark Andrews this past week. Whatever. They're on the road at Pittsburgh. Those are always, I don't care what the record is, Steelers-Ravens are always like hard-fought, you know, nasty, um, you know, kind of right AFC North, like real stereotypical, yes. you know, Willis divisional yeah, yeah. D- divisional battles. Um, but I do think because of the rushing, Tyler Huntley is, you know, potentially viable as a QB too? He was really good down the end of last season. And I think the other thing is he shook the curse because last year, end of last year, it's just losing close games for fun in agonizing fashion. Doesn't get the two point against Green Bay, loses a cl- close ones against Cleveland and the Rams and then goes down the field against Denver, gets the win to not save Baltimore's season, but relative to winning the division might have saved their season. And then their schedule at Pittsburgh this week, as you mentioned, then at Cleveland, that defense is no good. Uh, at the moment than Atlanta and Pittsburgh again. So I think that's overall, it's a good schedule. It is. It, it is. And so, uh, and we'll see we'll again. See when it, Lamar comes back. Yeah, I mean, like, and Harbaugh's trying to, like, you know, he said, you know, not impossible, but less likely this week. And as the weeks go on, it'll be more and more. But, you know, I, and again, I don't want to accuse anyone of anything. But there is a chance, 
I, I don't. I have no insight on this. I just want to say this: that I would. I would assume that somebody in Lamar's camp will will say something to the effect of like, "Listen, dude, you're a free agent. You're about to get paid. You're yeah. about to get a massive. Whether it's from the Ravens or somebody else, you're about to get a massive." life-changing money, you know, quarter of a billion dollar type deal here. Yeah. You know, if you're less than 100%, you really want to, and given the weight, the style of play that you have, you're really going to go risk a quarter of a billion dollars, you know, on a jet sweep against the Steelers. Yeah. You know, and so I just, again, I'm not accusing Lamar of anything. I'm not, I don't know any of this. This is pure speculation. A lot of hedging from you today. Cam Akers, uh, uh, Lamar Jackson. Uh. Yeah, but like, I, because this is like, because I want to be clear about this. I don't want people to think like, oh, I've talked to somebody and like, because this is like, you know, because there will obviously be Ravens fans that would be, if that were to happen, again, yeah. I, you know, they, they would be upset about that. And also, that, if he misses two weeks and comes back in three weeks, then at worst case, they're eight and six and still very much in the playoff picture. As someone who's not a doctor and has no medical credentials, I would set the over-under. It's probably like two and a half in terms of games that he misses that range. So you probably get two games of Tyler Huntley. I'm merely saying against without full knowledge of the injury, and given his contract situation and where the Ravens are because they could potentially be out of the playoff picture by the time he comes back, I'm just saying there's a non-zero chance that we've seen Lamar Jackson's last game this year. Fair? Sure. Fair. Non-zero. Non-zero. Non-zero chance. Okay. Well, we haven't seen the last game of Ryan Tannehill. He plays the Jags' favorable matchup after a much more difficult matchup against the Philadelphia Eagles who punked the Tennessee Titans. His schedule the next three weeks, Ryan Tannehill in particular, Jacksonville, at the Chargers, Houston, that is as good as it gets. Yeah, it really is. I mean, you're not worried about the Chargers. We just saw Derek Carr light them up. Jacksonville, of the last four quarterbacks that have faced my Swaguars have all scored over 18 fantasy points. And then you mentioned the home game against Houston. Four weeks from now, they play Dallas. And so, okay. who knows, by the way, Dallas may have clinched something there. Maybe they're resting their starters. So, we'll see. Um, uh, but anyway, certainly you like the next three weeks. I think they're all interesting as well. So, he's 83% avail- available. You don't love them, but again, this is just sort of if you're desperate, trying to get me a name. One last thing that came in uh, over the break. So some breaking news here just about the Titans. Not really fantasy relevant, but just sort of interesting. The Titans have fired their general manager, John Robinson. Yeah, uh, they're first place in the division. Division's basically locked up. They're going to the playoffs, but uh, the timing is just too good after I mean, A.J. Brown lights right. them up. So let me get this straight, John Robinson. You traded A.J. Brown, <laughs> yeah. and then he comes back, yeah. and he lights us up. Yeah, and you replaced him a with... Weird, uh, it, yeah. Robert yeah. Woods. Right. I mean, whatever. I mean, you know, so it's a, it's a, it's a weird one there, but maybe more changes coming sure. to, uh, to the Titans. You know, we'll see. They'll obviously replace John Robinson with a new general manager. Does that general manager keep Mike Vrabel or bring in his own staff? You know, so. You'd want to keep Mike Vrabel. I he would, might be the I, best coach in the league. Yeah. You and I agree with that. Yeah. But like, again, sure. like they're first place in the division and the guy just got fired. So who knows what's going on with Tennessee ownership. Um, but just uh, anyway, here's the great thing about the NFL. It's never boring. Hey, it's Matthew Barry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.